Welcome to the second video in this review of basic Greek morphology based on 12 core patterns. We'll now review a few more important variations or sub-patterns in the first two declensions. Let's begin with our passage from 1 Peter 1 that we used in the first video and now take a look at verse 4. We seem to have a feminine noun, kleronomion, followed by a series of either masculine or neuter words. So what's up with this? Well, some adjectives are called two-termination adjectives because they only have masculine and neuter endings and they don't have a separate form for the feminine. This is what they'll look like in a lexicon, just the nominative masculine and nominative neuter endings. And here's a sample paradigm. So you see the first column does duty for both the masculine and the feminine. So contrast that two termination paradigm with this three termination paradigm where you have a separate ending for the feminines. And you see here it has eta all the way through the singular. Some of these adjectives have alpha all the way through the singular. So all of these adjectives we just looked at, both the two termination and the three termination, have no new endings. They're the same endings we've seen for our core pattern. The only issue is that when one of these two termination adjectives modifies a feminine noun, it's going to use the form that looks like it's masculine. And so that's what's going on here in our passage from 1 Peter. Now let's move on to a passage that illustrates another variation and it has to do with gender again like this two termination adjectives did. Here we see what looks like a feminine article modifying a masculine or neuter noun. And so when you go to the lexicon to look up amon, what you find is amos u he. So there are some second declension nouns in their endings that are actually feminine instead of masculine and the lexicon will clarify if you're dealing with one of these or not. You probably learned some of these words as part of your basic vocabulary, like hey, hados. So recognizing the gender is usually not crucial when you're reading, but if such a noun has an article or an adjectival modifier, you might not pick up that there's agreement going on. So obviously, again, the lexicon will let you know what you're dealing with. In any case, there's no new endings to learn here, as you can see. Some nouns go the opposite direction. They look feminine, but are actually masculine. So here you have a masculine or neuter article with what looks like a feminine noun. When you look up that word in the lexicon, here's what you find, mathetes u ha. And here's its paradigm. So this is a masculine noun, but it uses first declension endings for all but the first two forms. So look at all the forms here except the first two and you'll see that they're regular first declension endings. And it's not necessary to learn a new pattern to identify the case and number except the nominative singular. The case and number, the crucial information you need when reading, and the weirdest part of this paradigm, that genitive singular, is actually the easiest one to parse since it looks masculine and it is masculine. So if you didn't know this word, then seeing this genitive ending, you'd expect the lemma to be a masculine or neuter. So you'd go looking for mathetas or mathetan, and you wouldn't find them. But you would find mathetes right there in the same place on the page. Obviously, if you're using a digital resource, then the lemma is given to you. And in this case, if you're using a classical Greek lexicon, you will in fact find one of the forms that you were looking for, because there's an adjective, mathetas a on, that doesn't happen to be used in the New Testament, so it's not going to be in a New Testament lexicon. Whenever you find two possible matches in a lexicon, you just need to compare the meaning and usage of the two words to figure out which one is actually in your text. So the only difficult form in this sub-pattern is the nominative mathetes, because it looks like a genitive singular feminine. And often this nominative form will have an article with it, which will help, or it'll be in a construction where you expect to find a nominative, which might tip you off. And the lexicon, of course, will be needed to sort things out often. So here we see the article with ergates pointing us in the right direction. Here we have two verses from the beginning of Matthew 14 that each have two examples of this eta sigma in the nominative. We've got two proper nouns and two nouns with articles. Here's what these words look like in the lexicon. Now there are 139 words used in the New Testament that follow this pattern with the nominative singular eta sigma and that nominative singular itself shows up 306 times. So be aware of that form and use the lexicon when the signals in the text aren't clear. 
but of all the differences, the variations in the first core pattern, this is the main one to pay attention to because our ending is sending a new signal. So that's an overview of the main features of the first and second declensions. I'm suggesting you become thoroughly familiar with this core pattern and the variations that we've reviewed and then look over a few further details in the book. So here's a summary of what we've seen in these first two videos. We've seen that the definite article is our core pattern along with those five brackets for the first and second declensions and there are important variations of that core pattern to keep in mind. The alpha eta shift we looked at that for the first declension singulars and the fact that some nominals that have a stem ending in epsilon, iota, or rho have an alpha sigma in two places, the genitive singular and the accusative plural. And then in this video we saw some adjectives lack a feminine form, those two termination adjectives, and we saw some second declension nouns are actually feminine, like hey hadas, but there were no new endings in any of that to learn. And then finally we saw the first declension nouns that are masculine and they have an eta sigma for the nominative singular ending. So there's two variations in the air words where you have alpha sigma showing up in two places and then especially the use of eta sigma for the nominative singular in that first declension masculine paradigm are probably the two variations to pay the most attention to. So learning this core pattern and its basic variations will prepare you to recognize the article and most first and second declension words you meet. And that will often be half the words in a passage. Now in the next video we move on to the third declension.